Fellas, thank you all for being here. It's really an honor and uh, a pleasure to be in front of you guys today. Uh, a couple of things I want to touch on before we get started about the Rose Bowl that we just got finished playing in. I finally found the best reason to have a golf course. If any of you guys have ever been to the Rose Bowl, there are two golf courses right beside it, and they park cars on that golf course. <laughs> and then uh, second of all, if you don't go over and cover the tight end on a two-point play, everybody in America sees that deal. <laughs> But uh, one thing I want to start with today is the first, I'm going to talk about some program stuff, first of all, some things I think we do differently at TCU. The first thing I'm going to talk about is our Colorado Circuit. We start Colorado Circuit, and we've actually had two of them last week. But what we do Colorado Circuit for, it's hips and feet. And everybody in our football program is going to go through Colorado Circuit. It is not a conditioning deal for us. Okay? It's a deal where we want everybody to be able to move their feet and play with their hips down. We think that's really important for a couple of reasons. We think it's important to stay healthy, first of all, okay, because it's going to allow our big guys now to run themselves out of trouble. Okay, and second of all, it's going to allow us to learn to play with our hips low. No matter what you do in the game of football, if you can't sink your hips and do those things, you're wasting movement and you're wasting space with some of that. So the first thing in the first phase of this deal, I want to start with the Colorado circuit. Okay. And as we get into this, I'm going to explain exactly what it is. We're going to start out with some bag drills. But what you can see in between these bag drills, there is about 10 yards in between two sets of bags. What that does for us is this. As I come off of this set of bags, it's going to give me a chance to sink my hips and burst coming out of things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do one foot in every hole. And as you can see, we've got two different sides of it set up as we're going with everything. That's one foot in a hole. Again, coaching points as we come out of it, we're coaching running for them with it. We want to see our eyes down the field. We don't want to be looking down at those bags and everything that's happening with that. Okay, now we're going to go two foot in a hole. Again, we're working on quick, explosive action. And again, once I come to the end of that bag, I want to sink my hips and I want to burst and I want to be able to come to the end of it again. And then at the end, we've got a cone that's set up about five yards from it. Another chance to sink my hips and burst and finish things. We coach more about the finish than we do anything else. Especially as a defensive football player, a lot of things can go bad and a lot of things can go wrong, but if I finish great, we're going to have a chance. Again, we'll do that down and coming back. Okay, the next thing is going to be a crossover step. How we work our guys out, we're going to work out in three different groups with it now. Okay, we've got a skill group that comes in with the defensive backs and the wide receivers. We've got a stand-up group, which is the tight ends and linebackers, and we throw kickers and quarterbacks in there too. And then we've got a big guy group, which is the lineman group. So that's how we divide up our three groups. One thing you can see us doing over here now is this. There's a coach that's always going to stand in front of each group, and he's holding up a number. We do that for two reasons. Again, do I have my eyes up as I'm coming through there? Again, as a football player, if I'm ever looking down at the ground, I don't know what's happening. It's not a very good position for me to have my eyes in. So we always want their eyes up, and we're going to flash different numbers. They've got to echo out whatever that number is. Again, it's another way to get them to communicate. So anything that we can where they're going sideways, we're going to have a coach standing in front of each deal and changing numbers up, and we're all echoing the call as we come down through it. But again, as I come off the bag, what am I doing? I really want to sink my hips, and I want to drive, and I want to burst with it. One thing we've done at TCU, as far as recruiting goes, we're not going to be as big as a lot of people, but we can run. And we're going to run our butts to the football. Okay, now, instead of a crossover step, now it's just a lead shuffle step coming over it. But again, coming off, I'm bursting with it. We're going to have great effort as we go through this. If we ever get to a position where our effort's not very good, we'll start the whole thing over again with all of it. There's going to be an expectation whenever we step out on that field of how it's going to be. This next drill is going to be an in and out drill with all of it now. Again, what we really want to see now is we want to see, we're going to talk about a football position. And defensively, offensively, whatever it is, whenever I'm in a good football position, my chin's going to be in front of my knees. Okay, that's the, the relationship that we want to maintain throughout this drill. Especially from a defensive back standpoint or anything when I'm coming out of a break, I want to always keep my chin over my knees because as I come back, all my weight's going to go back on my heels with everything. We want the weight distributed on the balls of our feet with it. 
Again, so now as we're coming back with it, now when we go forward, one of our key terms is throwing the hammers when we're coming out of a break. Okay, I really want to over-exaggerate that arm action as I'm coming forward. From a, from a safety standpoint and a corner standpoint, linebacker, anything that happens, the faster my arms are, the faster my feet are going to be with it. Okay, so we really want to over-exaggerate throwing my arms and driving back downhill with it. But again, the things that we want to see, we want to see our chin stay over my knees the whole time with it. We're too high. That's actually Andy Dalton right there. And for us, whenever we do things, when we're going backwards, we are not very concerned about how fast we go backwards with things. We want to go back as slow as we can, and when we come forward, we want there to be a huge sense of urgency and a huge burst to what's going on with it. A neat deal about a couple of these guys that are in here, they were seniors that had already graduated. Instead of going off somewhere else to train, they were going to do what got them to that point throughout their career with all of it. Again, the same thing. You, need, you could have a guy up here in the front, again, calling out numbers with things. Get my eyes up. See what's happening with it. Really over-exaggerating the drive coming out of it. And again, like I said, this is not a conditioning drill for us. Okay? Give them a little bit of a break in between there as all of it happens. Okay? We call this skiing now, like your slalom skiing. And we want to get as wide to each side of the bag as we can with it. And as soon as I hit the ground, I want to be off the ground with all of it. We want it to be a quick deal. Again, working on my lateral movement with things that happen with it. And like I said, we will do this at least two times a week. Uh, once we get off the road recruiting, we'll do it every Wednesday morning until we start spring ball. And I'll talk to you about an enthusiasm station that we do along with that. But again, we're going to do each thing going down and back with it. All right, this next drill is what we call pat and goes. You can see we've got cones set up here, about five cones on each side. And those cones are five yards apart with everything. Our biggest deal now about pat and goes is this. As we come to a cone, I want to pat my feet around that cone until my hips are facing the other direction, and then I want to burst with it. Because what it's teaching me to do now, as I come to a point, I want to settle my hips around that cone and now drive to the next point that I'm going to. Again, what's it teach us to do? It teaches us to sink my hips and move my feet when my hips are sunk with the thing. I think it's a great drill. And again, as you get into it, we really want to throw our hammers once we get around it. It should be one, two, three, four, I'm around it, and now let's go. But again, force them to really pat their feet around it. It doesn't want to be a stick and then drive back out of it. But again, there's five cones, and they're about five yards apiece. Here's a little bit better picture of it here with everything. As I'm getting around that cone, I'm getting all the way around it with my hips, and then I'm going to burst. And typically what we do with this, we'll go down, back, and down where they get at least three. We may go four reps with it. But those are pat and goes. We're big on, on busting your tail to the next deal after all of it. All right, now in this next one, okay, we've got four or five cones set up along here, but what we're doing now, when I come forward, it's going to be a burst. You can see we spread everything out to about 10 yards here, and each one of these cones is still going to be five yards apart, okay? So each one of these is going to be 10 with it now. But again, what we want to do, we're really over-exaggerating things now. I'm going to drive, and I'm going to sprint to that first cone. Then it's going to become a backpedal, where again, I've got to open my hips back up, and I'm backpedaling at that cone there. Okay? And then once I get to that cone, a lot of times we'll stand a guy right there where they're not always looking over their shoulder of where they're going. I'm going here, and he's going to give me a go call. As soon as he gives me a go call, again, I'm sinking my hips, I'm throwing my hammers, and I'm driving. You can see, he's saying go now with it. 
Okay, and again, we do not care how slow they go back, but when I go forward, I really want to see an exaggeration. I want to see a burst with all of it now. Same thing we were looking at when we were in the bags with all of it. What's my chin? It's my chin over my knees. I think it's really important that as we get into some drill stuff, it's going to be really important that the drills that you do carry over onto the football field to make you a better football player. Don't put your kids in a position as a coach where you're going out and practice something because that's what you've always done with it. And then it, what's the purpose of this drill? What are we trying to get better at? What do we need to do to get better as a football team? This whole circuit takes us about 45 minutes uh, on days other than Wednesday morning. When we do it on Wednesday morning, what we're going to do is we're going to divide into seven different stations, and one of those stations is an enthusiasm period, and we get through it in about 20 to 25 minutes that day. Again, we don't try to gas them, and if you've got to give them a little bit of a break at some point in there where we're all standing up back here with it. But when we go, we go. And our kids get really fired up. Even during bowl practices, sometimes we'll come back and we'll get back into, we call this drill the Colorado circuit. We'll get into doing a Colorado circuit. And those seniors, they get a little bit upset because they thought they were finished with Colorado circuits uh, with all of it once they got into the season. All right, this next drill now is going to be what we call a figure eight drill. We're going to tell them which side we're starting with. Okay, and they're going to sprint, and again, this becomes like pat and goes for us now. But now as I'm doing it, I'm patting my feet all the way around that cone, and I'm simply going to run two figure eights. Once we get to the end point, then the next group's going to go with all of it. Could have better arm action. That's Stephen Hodge that's playing for the Cowboys now. But again, it's the same concept that carried over in all the pat and go stuff. I'm getting myself to a point, I'm sinking my hips, I'm getting around that point, and now I'm bursting coming back out of it. Then we'll do it to the other side with all of it. You can turn the thing into a competition deal, but we really do not do much of that, again, because we're more concerned about really sinking our hips and running our feet when we do this stuff. The other couple of days of the week during the off-season, we'll, we'll have a speed school where we're really teaching the kids how to run, what will help them with their running form, how can we increase their stride length, what can we do with it that way, and then we'll have a conditioning day or two in there where we really try to go out and get a foundation for what's happening. All right, the next one now is a box drill. What we're doing in the box drill, depending on how many guys you've got, we've got four or five different boxes set up here. Okay, the first thing that's happening now, we're sprinting to the first cone. Now it's going to become a karaoke, then it's a back pedal. Now it becomes a basketball shuffle, finishing the thing out with it. Again, we're trying to get them to a point. Now we're trying to change what I'm doing with my body. Trying to have our eyes up as we do the same thing with all of it. Okay, and then we'll go to the other side and then do it that way where we're working movement out of both sides of our body. And now we're going to get into jingle jangles. What we're going to tell them is we're always going to touch with one hand or the other. Or we may tell them we want to touch right, left, right. But again, they're a little bit tired mentally with this deal right now because they've been through five different stations so far. 
can you think when you're tired? That's one thing we really want to do as we approach our practice schedule and everything that we do. We want to make practices harder than the game's going to be with things. Okay? Can you think when I'm tired? Because that's when it becomes the hardest, and most of the time that's when the football game's on the line with all of it. Again, from a coaching point standpoint, and, and so much of this stuff carries over to what those kids are going to do if they do have a chance to go play in the NFL. And you can see right here, we don't want to stand up high with all of it. Now, I'm wasting movement. The more things I can do in, with my pads down low and with my chin over my, my knees, the better I'm going to be with it. But we'll go five and back, ten and back, and then finish through 15. And the biggest thing we want to watch when we finish is, do I pop up? Because if I ever pop up, I know I'm not finishing the way I need to. As soon as one groups, the next group's got to be down, ready to go. Okay, the first time we go through it, we may touch with our right hand the whole time, and then we may go with our left hand. And that's really Colorado Circuit. Like I said, when we do it on Wednesday mornings, we also have an enthusiasm station. And what their job is, when I'm in the enthusiasm station, is I better be going around having the rest of the groups uh, really being enthusiastic, and it's my job to help bring those guys along. I need to volunteer here real quick. One more drill that we'll do whenever we are uh, in a Colorado circuit is what we call the X drill. I think it's a great deal. Scoot back for just a second here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clap my hands or snap the football, and that's going to get our feet going, okay? Then, on the derivative, we're going to come forward right now, as fast and as hard as I can. All right, now I'm going to go back at a 45-degree angle. I'm going to open my hips and run with it now, though, okay? I'm opening my hips and running. Every time I change direction, though, what we want them to do, we really want them to sink and touch the ground. Because, again, what does that do? That's going to get my hips down in a football position with all of it. So now I'm opening at a 45-degree angle. I touch the ground. Okay, I'm running as fast as I can. Now I'm coming forward. I'm changing direction, so what am I doing again? I'm touching the ground and I'm sinking my hips. When I come forward, I want to come straight forward with it. Now we're going back to the left, and now we're going to finish through with all of it. Okay, I think, again, that is another drill, and we call that the X drill uh, that can really help you. And I'll do that with my kids throughout the season, again, working on really hips and feet and being able to come out of a break plus the reaction that you get because it's all going to be based off of a football. I'm going to show you two more circuit things that we do. First of all, why do we use circuit training? Okay, We're going to use circuit training because you can get a whole lot of reps in a very short period of time. When we circuit train, we've got four different stations that are set up with all of it. Okay, This is our tackling circuit, is what it's going to be. This is the first day that we are in spring ball or the first day that we're in fall camp with all of it. You can see we don't have any pads on. To be honest with you, we don't really care about that, though. Okay? We want to create a mentality of being physical, a mentality of if you're going to go tackle the right way, you're not going to get yourself hurt with any of it anyhow. So that's what we want to be able to do with it. The first thing that we're going to work on, the first station we've got now is going to be an angle tackle station. Okay, we've got a line of offensive guys over here that are holding a bag with all of it. Here's the line of defensive guys. What the offensive guy is doing, he's running at that cone right there. Okay, as a defensive standpoint, what we really want to coach and try to get out of this drill is this. When I am going to that ball carrier, I want to press as much as I can, and it's all going to start with my first step here. I want that step to be downhill, and I want to take space away from that offensive player. I don't want to stay lateral. We'll talk about in coverage, when I get beat as a defensive back, I get beat two times. I get beat when I get head up with the wide receiver and he's got a two-way go, or I get beat in transition with all of it. If I stay here and I stay head up with that ball carrier, he's going to go any way that he wants to now. Okay, again, we talked about us being able to run and our deep deal being built on speed with it. We want to continue to press things to the sideline and continue to make him run east and west, not north and south. One thing we're going to talk about when we tackle, we're going to talk about straight line tackling. What is straight line tackling? Straight line tackling is this. If I drew a line from the top of the head to the base of my butt, that would always stay in a straight line. 
Anytime I start getting my neck out of line or my body out of position where that's not a straight line, I'm going to have a chance to miss the tackle or get myself hurt with all of it. We're really big on shooting our arms and, and wrapping cloth and grabbing up. And whenever we go over into the other room, I'll show you all a deal that we've really gotten big into about tackling legs. Once I make contact now, I want to get my hips back square and work back up the field. And again, once we go on this side, we're going to go ahead and rotate and go to the other side with it now. And we really coach our guys over there as bag holders too. It's as much your job in these drills when we're doing tackle and circuit to hold that bag up under your chin where we get a good feel for what the fit is going to be with it. We don't want them holding the bag all the way out here. I'm holding it up under my chin and tight to my body so I can do a great job of clubbing up and grabbing cloth. Once we finish on that side, now the offensive guys are simply running to this cone with it. And again, all of these things, the four stations that you'll see, this is the first day, so we've done it in 10 minutes. Once we get into it, the four stations you'll see happen all within five minutes. Everybody gets a chance to tackle four different ways within five minutes and a bunch of reps of it. How do we, how do we rotate in between drills? At the end of each drill, we're going to come together as a group. Okay, We're going to break down and we're going to sprint to the next group. This drill now for us is called string out. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to work on two cut blocks and then we're going to work on an open field form tackle with it. Okay, again it becomes really important now how we're playing the cut blocks and where my eyes are. The first day we do this, we're going to make them hold the cut block. Okay, the first thing you've got to train your guys, and we've been fortunate that we get to play an option team every year, be it Air Force or somebody like that, and in order to defeat a block, the first thing I've got to do is I've got to see that block. It's my job now as a defender, in order to defeat that block, once I've seen it, I have got to stop his charge. And our biggest coaching points when we're in string out drill is this now. There should be a pop as I attack his helmet and my thumbs need to be up with it. I want to pop here and stop his charge here and my thumbs are up. And now that's my front hand and my back hand is going to be on his shoulder pads. Okay, And I'm here with it. And again, my eyes are down and I'm playing it. Okay? My outside foot's always going to be back with it. If I ever get my outside foot up trying to play a cut block, I'm beat because I can't run myself out of the problem. That's what we're trying to teach them when we're in string out. Again, we're going to make them hold it. Where they get that position now of being able to sink my hips, now playing off a block, and then going to make a tackle with it. Same thing we're talking about, though. We're talking about straight line tackling with all of it. Everything is going to carry over. It's not a very good job here because what did he do? He didn't ever punch with it. His arms are here. In order to stop that guy's charge, I've got to be physical and I've got to be violent and I've got to punch. And you guys can see the rotation that happens with it. We go from a bag holder to the first cut guy to the second cut guy. All right, this next one is called button latch. What button latch is for us is this. It's going to be a close quarter tackle, okay? And we've got two guys with bags right here with it, and here's the defender over on this side. We've got a coach on either side of this deal, okay? What this guy in the back is looking for now, he's looking for, okay, first of all, are my eyes open when I'm tackling things? Second of all, once I've clubbed him up, am I actually grabbing cloth with it? That's what he's looking for in the back. Okay, coach over on this side is going to start the drill and then he's going to blow the whistle and once the whistle happens, I'm simply backpedaling out and then I'm going and I'm going to make another form tackle on the second guy. The only thing that we will change when the defensive line is over here at this particular deal, instead of backpedaling out, we're going to do it as a draw retrace. So I fit up on him, I made a tackle, now I'm sinking my hips and getting back out and coming back downhill with it. But the rest of the positions, this is our linebacker group right here. That's Tank Carter who was the uh, Rose Bowl MVP here with it. But that's button latch. All right, the next one's going to be an open field deal, and what we've got is we've got four dots set up in a diamond pattern with it. 
Okay, we're going to start a couple of yards on either side of the dot. This side is the offensive side down here with it. We're going to run straight ahead to that dot, and then he can cut either direction with it. Okay, I've got to be able to come to a, a base now, but again, it's going to be the same drill you saw Coach Tatamy doing the first one on here. What's really important now is going to be that first lead step. Again, I want to constantly press that ball carrier. I want to go take his grass away from him. I think one thing as you really get into tackling stuff that can help you too is this. Once you make contact, okay, and I am the running back or the offensive guy with all of it, I want to spin out to where I just came from with everything. Again, that's really going to force them to grab cloth and finish that tackle. Because if I don't, then the guy's just spinning off of me. But again, you've seen us do some things in close quarters. You've seen us do some things in the open field. You've seen us do some things with block progression with all of it. But again, there's so much carryover with how we're doing it. I think it's really important that you know what you're trying to get out of the drill as you go teach it. This is the safety group that's down here at Button Latch now. But again, you can see the drive. It's that same drive that we tried to create throughout the offseason. It's the same thing we're going to do in a lot of our individual stuff. Again, it's important that me as a bag holder holds that bag up underneath my chin with all of it. That is our tackling circuit. Okay, the next thing I want to show you now is going to be the takeaway circuit, okay? Again, what are we trying to get accomplished by doing a takeaway circuit? First of all, we're going to talk about turnovers, okay? It's our job as a defense to go get the football back for the offense. That's our ultimate goal with it. Now, one thing that we got a couple of years ago, and we actually got it from the Wake Forest guys when they came to visit us one spring, is we call it loose change. What loose change for us is this. Anytime you saw a quarter or a silver dollar laying down on the ground and you were walking down the street, you'd bend over and pick that thing up, right? Anytime there's a ball on the football field, as a defensive player, we want to talk about going and picking that, that loose change up that's out there. I don't care if it's an incomplete pass that's happened during pass Kelly. I don't care if the offense has fumbled a ball, whatever it is with it. And, and we're going to have a sense of urgency about trying to get to wherever that loose change is at and going and getting it. Again, for us, it's more of a mentality. What we've got here now, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen anything like this, but what we've got is we've got basically some surgical tubing. Okay, and in that surgical tubing, we've tied a loop to one end of it where a kid can put it around his wrist and hold on to the football. Okay, we also take a little bit of air out of those footballs, and then the other end of that surgical tubing is going to be connected into the laces on the ball. So what happens for us now is we're going to work a strip drill with it. But now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come and we're going to secure the tackle and then we're going to strip it out. What's really neat about the deal now, by having all of the surgical tubing and everything on there, you don't have balls going everywhere. Okay? I'm doing it. I'm stripping it. Okay, but now the guy still got it around his wrist. He can pull it back and now he can put it in his other arm as it's going and now we can get a whole lot of reps again in a quick short period of time with it. What we'll do is we'll start going this direction. They'll get one with each arm, and then we're going to turn around and go the other direction with all of it. Okay, the most important thing I'm going to do with all of it now, though, is I'm going to secure the tackle. You can, there's a good picture of what that thing looks like right there. The other thing we really use those balls for a lot is when we're blocking punts, especially in our specialty. I don't know how many guys listened to Coach Tomerdahl yesterday talk about special teams. But we do a uh, specialty circuit where we're going to cover every phase of what's happening special teams wise uh, before practice throughout the course of a week. And every day we'll do two or three of those and there'll be two or three different deals going on. I block punts with these. And again, we've taken some air out of that football where they're getting really good at shooting their hands, but now that ball's not going 30 or 40 yards down the field. We can get two of those deals going really quick and get a lot of good work at it. It's a nice job by Kenny over here on the edge. He's securing that tackle, and he's violently trying to strip that football out. 
Okay, that's down and back, one revolution. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is now we're going to work on punching the football out. Again, it's still going to be starting with securing the tackle, but now, instead of trying to strip it, I'm securing it, and I'm trying to punch that football out. Again, trying to give them different things that they can use. And I thought the play that the uh, kid from Oregon made in the national championship game was a freaking awesome play. And he came over and he punched the football out from behind. Again, we're going to talk a lot about when we get on one-on-one -on -one stuff. We're going to talk a lot about Skelly. Okay, now, the guy may have caught an out route, but what do I need to do? I need to secure that tackle and go ahead and start working on stripping, punching the football out with all of it. All right, this one now is going to be what we call a strip and scoop and score drill. We're going to work in partners with it. There's two guys that are going at the same time. The first guy that's coming in, this is the quarterback, okay? He's going to go strip the ball. The second guy wants to scoop and score it. And again, things that we'll talk about in our scoop and score drill is really being able to bend my knees, and if the ball is behind the line of scrimmage, I want to continue to scoop and push the football this way. And I've got to be able to bend my knees and do all of that. And as we do this, we'll rotate sides with it. Once I become the strip guy, then I'm going to become the scoop and score guy with it. We've gotten a little fancier lately, too, and we've got some Velcro and put a Velcro on a football where there's not a coach having to uh, handle it here. All right, now this is actually what we call scoop and score. You can see we've got five bags that are set up here with it. Again, the first day that we come through it now, it's going to be a lead step, all right? Again, my eyes are up. Same deal that we did in the Colorado circuit, okay? But now as I come off, the first day we're going to do it, we're really going to make them get down, and as I recover that fumble, I want them to feel what it's like to bend at my ankles and my knees with all of it. So we're going to get down, and as we recover that fumble, we're going to stay in that position now until we get a go call with all of it. And then I'm going to burst and get up the field. It takes a little bit longer, but the biggest thing we want to do is start teaching them how to bend at their knees instead of just bending over at my waist. And then when we score, we want to burst hard up the field with it. It's really a good job by TJ here of really bending his knees and getting down in there with it. And we always start at day one with holding them here the same way that we did uh, in the string out drill with it. Okay, then on our way back, what we're going to do is now we're going. And we're going as fast as we can. Again, the communication that's happening with it, another way that you get them to talk is this. Everybody is yelling ball, 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 ball whenever the ball's on the ground back here with it. All right, this first group that's starting out here now is going to be our linebackers with it. We've called these two guys two receivers here, okay? As a linebacker now, I'm dropping, and we are huge in underneath pass coverage of setting up when that quarterback sets up, okay? In order to be good at getting takeaways and in order to be good at uh, interceptions and things like that, you've got to do a great job of whenever that quarterback sets up, we've got to be able to come to a base defensively. The next step, whenever his hand comes off of the football, we've got to do a good job of breaking on that hand. We're starting to try to teach him this uh, as we go through this drill right now. So we've got two wide receivers that are here. Okay, I'm a linebacker and I'm dropping right now. Once the quarterback sets up, I want to be able to come to a base now. Okay, and now I'm going to break on whatever hand comes off. It's not a very good job here by Tanner because he's just covering one guy. If you threw it to this one right now, he's in trouble with all of it. But again, once I see that hand come off, where do I want to be with everything? I want to be pushing and taking away those passing lanes. It becomes like playing basketball with all of it now. I don't want to go to where the guy's at. I want to go and I want to take away that passing lane. We'll do it one direction, and then we'll do it the other way. 
And again, I think the quicker you can get to start doing all this stuff as the quarterback with it now, it's going to train your kids. Okay, things are happening fast. I'm getting myself set up, and now I'm breaking on that hand with it. All right. The next group that's coming over here now is the safety group with it. How we do it a little bit differently with these guys, we still treat them like they're two wide receivers right here. But now instead of dropping to the flat like I would do in robber coverage, I'm in a back pedal with it. Okay, and they don't know which way it's happening. And what we tell them is this. I'm driving now at a point of intersection. If I can step in front of and pick the football, that's what I want to do. Otherwise, I'm going to again secure the tackle and strip it and make sure he doesn't catch it. Not a very good job of throwing my hammers and bursting out of here with everything because he didn't use his arms with all of it. And we're big on them. If they don't catch a football, you'll probably see them over here doing some push-ups with all of it. Here's a neat story, a little bit about our system and what we do defensively. 17 here, his name is Tyler Luttrell. Tyler was a walk-on wide receiver for us that was a fourth-string wide receiver going into two years ago. We had lost Stephen Hodge, a strong safety that got drafted by the Cowboys. We had another one that, to be quite honest with you, was a turd and we ran him out of the program. And then Kylan Jones, number 28, had pulled his hamstring really bad uh, in fall camp. And we had a junior college kid that wasn't ready to go do it yet. So we really had about three guys at that position, but there were no numbers there. We didn't, nobody was practicing. We moved Tyler over from wide receiver seven days before we went to go play the University of Virginia out there. And he'd never played defense before in his life. And he started about eight football games for us last year before we went to the Fiesta Bowl with it. Uh, I say that because once we get into teaching, we're going to teach concepts. And it's going to become fairly easy for a kid in our system to learn those concepts, and they're going to carry over to everything that we do uh, defensively with it. And again, for us, how can you make your kids communicate? When they're going back, it becomes a pass call now. When that hand comes off, it becomes a ball call. What we want to do in underneath pass coverage is this. We want to get so good at breaking on the football that that quarterback now, he's taking his hand off and he's got to bring it back now and double pump. Because as soon as he took his hand off, we're breaking and taking away the throwing lanes with all of it. That's how we know when we're playing good underneath pass coverage with it. You don't know if they found a uh, marker board yet, do you? But that becomes our takeaway circuit for us now. Those are three things I think that are really good that you can go back and do. And, and I think the biggest one of them, again, is going to be uh, that Colorado circuit because it's something you can do year round. Okay, and it's something that's going to make you better as a football team. The next deal within our takeaway, we've got two different ones that we'll do. We do takeaway A, which you just saw, and then we do takeaway B, which has got a little bit different mechanics and a couple of things that are happening for us. Okay, what we're doing now, I don't care if I'm a safety and a half player, again, I'm going to get good on opening off of that quarterback's hand. That's what Coach Jennings is doing right now. He's signifying that the quarterback is taking his hand off the ball. I'm opening right now so I can go take away what I've got to take away. And then I've got to do a great job of going and finding the football. We talk to our kids all the time, and you heard me say finish earlier. One term that we've really started using a lot when we're in a position like this now is going up and getting a rebound. All kids will go out and they'll play freaking basketball by themselves and everything. But... If I was playing basketball right now and I waited for the ball to come down here, somebody else has gone up to get it. What I want to do is I want to gather, sink my hips, and go back and find that football wherever it is and go up and get it. That's the same one in takeaway B. All right, now, what we do with our defensive linemen whenever they come to Coach Jennings' drill, because they're not ever backpedaling, playing a half or anything like that, we're going to work on a couple of different read schemes for them. 
For us now, a silver, as we get into things, is going to tell the defensive end that he is going to spy the back coming off of it. Okay, but the thing that he's got to recognize when he's doing that, if it's a pass and that back flares across my face, I'm going to take him. If it becomes an option, I'm going to go back to being a quarterback player with all of it now. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give them different looks of either the back flaring or any of the option stuff that can happen with all of it now. And up front for the nose guard, against some empty stuff, I'll show you all some of that of how it goes, but we're going to read the block of, of that center and what's happening. And if that center blocks me, then I'm going to be the guy that's dropping into pass coverage and the other one's going to continue to rush with all of it. The other thing we'll do in this sometimes, you can see we've got an option going here with it right now. So he's not running up to the pitch. Okay, option showed. I'm now becoming a quarterback player with it and making him cross my face. Another view from down there with it. This is the day afterwards where you can see how quick we're going to get through everything here. That is what we do takeaway wise. And <laughs> we talk all the time, and, and sometimes, to be honest with you, when we've been bad at things, we'll, we'll stop doing them sometimes. Like if we're not any good at takeaways, maybe we'll get away from the takeaway circuit a little bit and just see if we can change things up with all of it. We led the nation a couple of years ago. We had 26 interceptions. We had 43 total turnovers with things, I think, that year. And we didn't work on it any more than we had any other year, but two years before, we were really bad at taking the football away. And people come, we had about 5,000 coaches that came in that one year. Well, what are you guys doing takeaway-wise that's any different? Well, we're not doing anything any differently. But again, what kind of things can you tweak and what kind of deals can you put in position that will help your kids when they're in a situation to go up and get a rebound? Or when that ball is on the ground, how do I go and recover it? What can we do with it? All right, that's kind of everything that I had to start with. Uh, one, one thing you will hear us talk about now is the pyramid within our program. And I'll give all you guys a copy of this as we go through everything. At the top of this pyramid is being national champs. Uh, Ten years ago when we got to TCU, a bunch of people would have looked at that thing and laughed. Okay, But what we've done is we've built our program. And we start at the foundation. And at the foundation of our pyramid, just like the foundation of our program, we've got attitude, chemistry, family, and accountability. Everything we do throughout the offseason, everything we do during fall camp is to build one of those four things. Okay, We've got this blown up, and it's on our team room wall, and at some point during the season, every one of our kids hopefully will go up and sign that. We ask them whenever they sign that pyramid that they have bought in. And they're going to do everything that that pyramid stands for. When we fill in different parts of that, when we talked about that foundation, at some point, hopefully during fall camp, we're going to be able to, to become a family. We're going to be accountable to each other. We're going to have great team chemistry. And when we do that, we've got some purple saran wrap type stuff that we're going to put over that period with, uh, over that point of all of it. Then the next thing on there is going to be different things that we talk about. How do we want our program to be defined? The first thing on there is MTXE. MTXE is mental toughness, extra effort for us. Underneath MTXE, we're going to overcome adversity. We're going to be unselfish. Okay, We're going to play relentless defense. We're going to run to the football. And we're going to play with great passion and great effort on offense. The tradition is another category that's under there. We want to be known at TCU as being physical. Okay, We want to play great with the kicking game. We want to have a great mentality both offensively and defensively with it. We've been number one, like Tony said, we've been number one in the nation the last three years on difference. And to be honest with you, there's really two stats that matter. There's, and the biggest one is winning. The other stat that we look at defensively is this. We want to average giving up one touchdown pass or less per game. Okay, I say that because of this. When we start getting into schematics and everything, we're going to put enough people in the box to stop the run. Uh, 2008, we gave up 47 yards a game rushing and gave up eight touchdown passes. Okay, we want to really be able to surround people and smother and take things away from an offense. We've been uh, three different times, and we've done it three different ways in the last three years. 
In 2008, we were a zone blitz team that played a lot of halves coverage. Okay, last year we played quarters and we zone blitzed or man blitzed very little. This year we zone blitzed some and uh, in the bowl game we man blitzed more than we had the rest of the season combined with everything that happened with it. The next thing that's going to happen within that uh, pyramid are a couple of different deals. And on those, at the top of the pyramid it says make it happen. Under each category in there, we've got a don't back down. We've got a leave no doubt. What those things are, those have been kind of our themes and mottos if we've gone out th throughout the years with it. Okay, and underneath those next two sections, we're going to talk about don't back down. And under don't back down, we've got Oregon State, we've got Tennessee Tech, we've got Baylor, and we've got SMU. Okay, we're going to divide the season up into different stages. Okay, those were our four non-conference games. As we won each one of those, again, you get out the purple saran wrap and you color in each one of those things. And Gary's going to get up and he's going to talk to him every Sunday in our team meeting about it. Okay, here's what we've got accomplished. These are the things that lie ahead of us. This is where we're trying to get to. This is where we've come. This is how we continue to do all of it. Okay? And then, leave no doubt. And under leave no doubt, we must win at home. In order to be a great football team, you've got to win the games that, that people come in your backyard and play. And then the next stage on there is going to be make it personal. First thing under that, we want to be conference champs. Okay? We want to go and win big games on the road. In order to be a conference champ, you can't just win at home and then when you go on the road to somebody else's house, you can't play very good. We've got to do a great job of when we go on the road, finding a way to win those games. And we talk all the time about getting ourselves in a position that we go and win the games that we're supposed to go win. The big games take care of themselves. We didn't have to talk to them and get them fired up to go play in the Rose Bowl, to go play Utah, or any of those things. you got to get them fired up when you go play a Wyoming, a Colorado State, some of those people that they know they're supposed to beat with things. Okay? And then as we take that next step, we start talking about the postseason. One of our team goals is always to go to a bowl game. Okay? That's a very bottom-level team goal for us. Okay? We want to be nationally ranked at the end of the season. We want to go win that bowl game. The step above that now, we want to go to a BCS bowl and we want to win it. Okay? A couple of years ago, I don't think we did a very good job as a staff when we went to the Fiesta Bowl. Our kids were there. They were kind of happy to be there. They were there more for the experience and the fun, and we didn't go win the football game. Kind of the mentality that our kids had this year, we finished playing a week before the SEC championship game. And we got, we got back home from playing New Mexico, and we had a team meeting on Monday afternoon. And Gary sat up there with the guys and explained a couple of different scenarios. He started talking about the Rose Bowl to him. He said, if things look the way they're going to happen, if Oregon beats Oregon State and Auburn wins the SEC championship game, we'll play in the Rose Bowl. Here's our schedule now for what that Rose Bowl is. We were going to take the kids out on the 26th and go to Pasadena and that deal. At the end of the meeting, about 50 kids came up to Gary and they said, hey coach, I know you're talking about going out there on the 26th, but is there any way maybe we can go out on the 24th where we can get a couple more practices out there in Pasadena, out there at the bowl site with everything? That's kind of the mentality that our kids have. Two things that make our kids special. First of all, football is important to them. Second of all, they want to win and they love to win. I think a lot of credit is due to our seniors in how they establish the work ethic for our kids. They're going to take the younger players under their wing as they come into their program and say, all right, here is the expectation level we have for you and for this football team. That covers our pyramid and everything that happens with it. Now, as we talk and start getting into some scheme stuff with everything that happens, For us, we are a 4-2-5. Let me say that I think you can be really successful running a ton of different schemes and doing what you do. What you've got to be able to do within your scheme, though, is when you have problems, you've got to be able to fix those problems. Offenses are too good anymore if you're going to go out and line up in one thing and play one front and one coverage or whatever it is. You've got to have answers. And you've got to be able to know how to fix problems. I say that in order to say this. Whenever you start preparing for practices and everything, and we've run this system for 15 years at least now with it, and every year we're going to go back and we're going to tweak things. 
and we're going to tweak things on a week-to-week -week basis, but how we teach it and the things that are important with it are going to stay consistent, and they've stayed consistent for really 15 years with all of it. As you go and approach it, we run a 425 for a couple of reasons, really. It's going to allow us to play with great leverage. It's going to allow us to put more speed on the field defensively. Like I said earlier, we're not going to be a big football team. We couldn't go line up and, and just play Wisconsin and hit them in the mouth because every one of their offensive linemen was six to eight inches taller than our guys and weighed about 70 to 100 pounds more than our guys did with it. Okay? As you get into the system, for us, personnel becomes really important. The two corners, our field, we play a field corner and a boundary corner. The field corner has got to be a guy that can run. He's going to be on an island out there where he's got to go play the post. Okay? He's got to be in a position where I, I'm comfortable of playing the post with one guy all day long. Our boundary corner, we've had it and done it different ways over the last few years. When we've been best at the boundary corner, we've got a six-foot tall kid that understands leverage and can go play press coverage with it. Okay, because what's that going to allow us to do whenever we start getting in and playing a three-by-one formation and everything like that? It's going to allow us to take away that single receiver back there. Okay, we play with three safeties all the time. We've got a strong safety, we've got a free safety, and we've got a weak safety. For us, a strong safety, he will always be the down player with it. Okay, when we play, and I'll show it to you on here, but let me draw it up here real quick. For us, the strong safety will always be in a position where he's a down player. He's not ever going to be a deep player. We talked about the field corner being able to ha having to be able to run where he can play the post. The bigger and more physical guy, if he can go and play one-on-one -on -one man coverage, it's going to allow us to do a lot of things into the boundary with it. These two guys for us are what we call the quarterbacks of our defense. The free safety, he's going to go to the passing strength side, and he's going to be responsible for giving us calls to the passing strength side. Okay, the weak safety, he's a guy that's got to be able to talk and communicate back here, but what he's also got to be able to do when an offense starts creating a two-back set, he's a guy that's got to be able to come down and play in the box with all of it now too. Okay, so different techniques that we're going to use and how we're going to teach these guys is this. The strong safety, he's got to be able to be a force technique. He's going to be a force technique when we're playing robber coverage. And I'll show you exactly what all this means here in a minute with it. But again, we want to be able to focus in, and this is my technique when I'm playing this coverage. And every year, we're going to go and we're going to talk about, is there a better way for us to go teach how what we're doing? And we want to be able to put it in as few words as possible. I think the best thing that we do from a teaching standpoint is this. Every spring we sit down and every summer we sit down and like I said, we've run basically the same scheme for 15 years. But within that scheme, how are you giving your kids the best chance to be successful? I think it starts with how you teach. I don't care if you're a three technique, a corner, a safety, or a linebacker with all of it. I want to start with my alignment. From a secondary standpoint, I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay? We're going to start by teaching a kid how to line up in three basic zone coverages versus two formations. We're going to teach them how to line up versus a pro set and how to line up versus twins. Because if we can get lined up versus a pro set and twins, we're now going to tell you how we want to play trips. Or we're going to tell you how we want to play an I-back set with it. If I can go get lined up in three coverages against two formations, it's going to give me a great chance where I can go and be successful and do what I've got to do. Now, why do we just teach three zone coverages? Because now we can combine all of those coverages to the read side and to the away side, and we can get nine different coverages. But by teaching three of them versus two formations, it's going to allow our kids where they can learn and, okay, it's a pro set. I'm playing this coverage. This is what my responsibility is. It's a twin set, and I'm doing this. And I've got to look at my half of the field. The free safety is going to talk to the passing strength side, and the weak safety is going to talk to the away side. What's my stance? Again, how few of words can you put it in? 
What's my key? My key is going to tell me what's happening. Is it a run or a pass? If it is a run, I can have a run to me and a run away from me. And then if pass shows, what am I doing? Let me change this deal over right here, and I will show you exactly what we're talking about. Will that pull that up on there? Do you need to hit a button? We'll start drawing it up here until we get that thing pulled up. But what we want to be able to do throughout our teaching process is this. We talked about playing three basic zone coverages. For us, we're going to play robber coverage, we're going to play quarters coverage, and we're going to play halves. Okay, And I don't care what you call any of them. For us, we call robber coverage cover two. But from a free safety standpoint, it's my job to come out and the first thing I've got to do, I've got to determine where the passing strength of that formation is. You've got two receivers over here, so it's going to be to the twin side with all of it. He's going to come out and he's going to say, I'm reading left, playing whatever coverage I'm playing. Okay, My alignment as a free safety when I'm playing robber coverage is this versus twins. I'm going to split the difference between the offensive tackle and the number two receiver, and I'm going to line up 12 yards off of that receiver. Okay, you say, why do you want to line up 12 yards off of that receiver? We want to line up there so we can do what our kids will call rule number one. Don't go until you know. We're going to put you in a position where I can read what's happening slowly and then react fast to it. When we're playing good on defense, our three safeties will be in the top five guys in tackling for our whole football team when we're playing the kind of defense that we want to play with it, okay? That's my alignment, splitting the difference between the offensive tackle and the number two receiver. What is my stance? My stance, my shoulders are square with my outside foot back, okay? What is my key? My key is I'm going to be a ball key. Run to me, I'm going to be an alley quarterback player versus the option. Run away from me, I'm going to be a cutback player with it. If pass shows, what we say is I am man-to-man -man vertical clue of number two. What that tells me is this. Once number two runs past a certain point down the field, it's going to turn into man-to-man -man coverage. If number two runs an outside route underneath eight yards, let's say, I'm going to give a wheel call and rob curl to post of number one. That is how the free safety plays robber coverage versus twins. The only thing that will change for him now versus a pro set is going to be his alignment. And within his alignment, he now is going to line up 8 to 10 yards deep on the read side guard. My stance, shoulders are still square with my outside foot back. Still a ball key. Run to me. I'm an alley. Quarterback player versus the option. Run away. I'm going to be a cutback player. Pass shows, I'm still man-to-man -man vertical clue of number two, which is the tight end. Okay? If the tight end runs a, an outside route underneath eight yards, I'm going to give a wheel call, Rob Curl, the post of one. That is the free safety in cover two. Now, let's talk about the strong safety. And we'll start with a pro set since we have it up here. 
My alignment versus a pro set is seven yards outside and three yards deep. It sounds a little bit corny, but I always talk to my kids, and especially young players, if you have a problem on the football field, ask yourself the answer. And what does ask mean? Alignment, stance, key, and assignment. And they'll all remember it from that point with everything. And, and if I see a kid walking down the hall, I'll tell him if he's a free safety, I'll say, okay, Johnny, tell me about cover two. What he better be able to tell me is, okay, coach, my alignment versus a pro set is this. This is my stance. This is my key. This is my assignment. Run to me. Run away. And again, if they can start thinking and communicating like we do in very short bursts, now they're going to have a chance to go play fast. When that ball snapped, I know exactly what's happening, and I know where I'm going with all of it. You say, why do you play this guy in a seven by three alignment, seven yards outside and three yards deep? For us, we can go and recruit that 190 to 200 pound guy. Okay, we've got a hard time going and, and finding 250 pound nine techniques with all of it. But what I can do as a strong safety now, I've got to be able to be a leverage player. What does playing with leverage tell me? I've got to be able to be a force player versus the run, and if pass shows in robber coverage, I'm a flat defender. We can get in a situation where now I can create a great angle for us defensively and I can force that tailback to do two things. I can force him to cut back or I can force him to bounce all the way here with it and if he does bounce, it's going to give everybody else a chance to get there with it. Okay, let's go back to the strong safety in cover two though. We talked about his alignment versus a pro set being seven by three. We're really big on our kids of talking football knowledge. That's all they need to know right now, that that's a pro set. There's a couple of things that can affect my alignment. Now if they create two backs back here, well, there's a bigger chance they can run the football. So, is it, so does it do any good for me if it's first and 10 to play three yards deep? We'll go ahead and play him at the line of scrimmage with it. But again, he's still in position now, if run shows, to be a force player. And then if pass shows, I'm going to be a flat defender, swing deep of number three. Okay, what that tells me is this. If number three, counting from outside in, runs through my zone and then vertical, I'm going to end up playing it. Okay, but I set a flat defender before that. So as soon as pass shows in robber coverage, I'm opening and I am running to the flat. But again, where are my eyes? My eyes are back on that quarterback, that drill you saw us do during takeaway circuit. Okay, and I'll show you some of us during individual stuff. And whenever that quarterback sets up in his drop, I no longer am running to the flat. I'm squaring myself up, and I'm breaking on that hand with it then. Okay? We're big on communication with it. Communication that that strong safety can hear from the corner, he can hear a China call, an in, or an out call. Okay, what China tells us is this. China tells us, that the number one receiver has run a route at or before five yards. I don't care how an offense is doing it. They may just let the guy stand there. But as soon as that corner gives a China call, he's going to sink, and that flat defender is going to go look up that number one receiver, and he's going to play man-to-man basketball with it. Okay? And in and out call, tell me this. Tell me number one has run past five yards, and he's either running an inside route or he's running an outside route. That becomes really important for us in pass coverage because of this. If I'm the strong safety, okay, pass shows, I'm dropping to the flat, but where are my eyes? They're back on the quarterback with all of it. That corner now is going to be the eyes in the back of my head. I know if I'm getting an end call, I know two things. I know the number one receiver's run past five yards and he's running an inside route, but where are my eyes? They're still on the quarterback. Because as soon as I take my eyes back here, I'm never going to get an interception with anything because I can't set up and I can't break on it. That's the communication that we want to get to where we can really get accomplished with the thing. I just jumped around on you there for a second, sorry. We're going to go back to the strong safety. His alignment versus a pro set is seven by three. What is his stance? His stance, he's cocked in at a 45 degree angle. Why do we cock that guy in at a 45 degree angle? So he can have great vision and I am in a position now that if I get run to me, I can be a great force player with it. Okay, what is his key? He's going to key the end man on the line of scrimmage to the backfield. That's going to tell him what is happening. Now, he's got to understand who that end man on the line of scrimmage is. If it's a tight end, a couple of things can happen. 
He can release on a pass, okay? Or he may be going to block a linebacker. I don't know. That end man on the line of scrimmage is going to give me an initial key, and the backfield is going to confirm what's happening. Again, you heard me talk about rule number one, and this is how we abbreviate it. Don't go until you know. And on all of our grade sheets and everything that happened, if a kid sees that, he understands that he went somewhere and he moved before he should have with all of it. We talked about, now, that's my key, my assignment on run to me. I'm a force, pitch player versus option. Run away from me, and now I'm going to be a fold cutback player. Again, talking about knowledge with young kids. What happens anytime that football goes away from me? There's really two things that can happen. It can be a run away from me, that I've got a chance of that thing cutting back to me, or now I can get boot action with all of it that happens. So again, start trying to get them to understand the concepts of, okay, here we are with it. This is what can happen when this happens to me. Okay, then if pass shows, we talked about me being what? I now am a flat defender. What does that tell me as a flat defender? I'm opening at a 45 degree angle and I'm running until that quarterback sets up or until I get a China call. Once that quarterback sets up, I now am going to come to a base and I'm going to get ready to break on his hand. Okay? Once I get a China call, now automatically I snap my eyes out to that one, number one receiver and I go to play man-to-man -man basketball with him. That is robber coverage versus a pro set for the strong safety. Now, what other formation did we talk about? We talked about going and playing twins with it. If I'm going to go play twins, again, the only thing that is going to change for me now is going to be my alignment. For us, as a base alignment, we start him one by five yards off of the number two receiver, and we're going to play outside leverage on him. Again, you heard me talk about the word leverage. What we want to do, we want to be able to surround the football with safeties. It's our job to create a net around that football. When they're in a one-back formation, up front, you hear us talk all the time, there's one football, there's one back, we've got one gap. So all the gaps are going to be accounted for up front with things. Okay? But when that thing bounces, we've got to do a great job of closing that net down around the football with it. So we talked about my alignments, one by five now. What's my stance? If I've got an option threat to me, we can still cock in and play that thing from a 45 degree angle. We don't do that as much anymore because we want more of a disguise with it. When we're playing quarters coverage, we play it more square, so we want the same look. But again, if I am that strong safety now, what do I have to see and what do I have to understand? I've got to understand what kind of plays I can get to me based on where that backfield set is at. If that back is away from me, it's not so much of a big deal for us now. I can play more head up because I've got no option threat to me now. If they're under center or the back is strong to me, now I'm going to play more in an outside leverage position because I know what plays I've got to defend with all of it. All right? From a weak safety standpoint, again, what two formations are we going to teach him to get lined up to? Pro and twins with it. Versus a pro set, his base alignment is going to be six yards outside and seven yards deep. Okay? Stance wise, we're still going to cock him in at a 45 degree angle. Okay? What's his key? Same thing that the strong safety did when he was in a force position. It's still a force technique. All right, I'm going to key in man on the line of scrimmage to the backfield. Run shows, I'm going to be a force player, pitch player versus option. Pass shows, I am a curl two flat player, but now I'm swing deep of number two. What does swing deep of number two tell me? For the strong safety, we said swing deep of number three. For the weak safety now, if number two runs through his zone and then vertical, he's going to end up playing it. When we start talking about corner, Whenever the corner is the away side corner, he knows this, the free safety is away. With the free safety away, I am post all day, is how we teach that away side corner in robber coverage. Okay, that covers all of a pro formation. Now versus twins, what's changed for me? My alignment now has changed. 
Again, it's going to be important that I know where that back is. If I've got an option threat, I'm going to cheat myself a little bit more outside because I know I'm the pitch player. If they're in shotgun with the back away from me, let's play more head up with it now because I know what I've, what I've got to defend with all of it. Okay? I'm still in a force technique. What's my key? In man on the line of scrimmage to the backfield. What's that in man on the line of scrimmage going to do? If he pass sets, there's two things that can happen. And again, don't go until you know. It could be a draw or it could be a pass. I'm going to confirm what's happening back here in the backfield with all of it. Run to me. I'm an alley or I'm a force and uh, contain player, pitch player versus the option. Run away from me. I'm going to be a cutback player. Pass shows, curl to flat, swing deep of number two. Again, the communication that the corner can give that flat defender, still a china call, still an in or an out with all of it. Again, we've got to get good at communicating those things. If he gets a china call, he goes and looks it up, he's going to sink. That is the safety position in robber coverage. For us now, the next thing that we'll go to is the corner position. Let me draw this whole picture up here so you can see what we're going to look like. That is the base look that we're going to have. Our field corner, or the read side corner here, okay, he is going to be two to seven to nine yards inside of that number one receiver if it is a normal split. Okay, again, why are we going to play him there? We talked earlier about he's got to be able to go play the post with all of it. He's got to get himself far enough inside where he can maintain that post relationship. We talked, and whenever we go next door, I'll show you exactly what we're going to talk about uh, from a free safety and the technique that we're going to use and, and how we take that thing away. We don't want that corner to get head up with that wide receiver where now it turns into a chase game with all the post with it. Okay, His outside foot, his stance, shoulders are square, but his outside foot is slightly up. He's going to look inside to the quarterback to get a ball kick. All right, What's going to happen right now if run shows he has no primary run support? Okay, if pass shows, he's going to read three-step. If the quarterback throws the football, he's really slow getting out. If he throws the three-step, I'm driving down and I'm tackling it. If the quarterback now goes into a five- or a seven-step drop, I'm taking my eyes back to the receivers, and I'm really reading one to two with all of it. Okay, anything number one ran past eight yards becomes man-to-man -man clue for us, and he's going to end up driving down on it. If number one runs anything underneath five yards, guess what he's doing? He's given a China call, and now, why do we play a China call? He goes and looks that up, so now we can double the deeper route, and we can go play it. I give a China call, I'm opening my hips back up, and I'm sinking to get underneath that corner route by number two. For us and how we play linebacker, talking about the pass, first of all, We've got a read side linebacker and an away side linebacker. The read side linebacker is always going to go to the passing streak. He will always be on the passing streak side. We don't know which one that will be because we don't know which way we have the front set. When we start talking about setting the front, we can set our three technique to the tight end, to the split end, to the field, to the boundary with it. But right now, let's say we were here and our Mike linebacker is our read side linebacker. Here's what his responsibility is in robber coverage versus the pass. He is going to open up off of number three. Again, we're counting from outside in. One, two, three's in the backfield with all of it. If three opens into the boundary, now we've got one, two, three, four on three, and we've got three on two out here with all of it. By opening up your read side linebacker off of number three, you're always going to be able to outnumber the offense. You're always going to have one more guy than they have there with all of it. Okay, now, again, we talked a little bit about that strong safety and having to be aware and know where his threats are. He knows that that linebacker is going to open up off of number three, so if he's here, read side linebacker starts opening this way, there's a little bit of hole that, that's in here in robber coverage. How do we take that out? We've cheated our alignment, and we played inside with it a little bit no, more now with everything. Okay, understanding what's happening with the whole picture of things. But for him, the read side linebacker is this. He is a wall three, vertical three. 
Okay, so if number three should happen to go vertical, he's going to go play it, whatever side he happened to. If number three doesn't go vertical, he's still going to open up off of him, but now he's going to build a wall. All right, the away side linebacker. What does he do? Versus the run, he's going to play whatever gap responsibility he's got, according to the front. If pass shows, he's a vertical player of number two. Okay? Again, you guys look at this deal and say, shoot, how's he going to play the run and be a vertical player of that number two receiver? We teach robber coverage on day one, and we're going to play it all the way across the board, even if they come out in four wides. But one of the beauties of our package now is this. And why we teach it in day one, and why we want to teach it versus a four wide receiver set, so again, they can start understanding the strengths, the weaknesses, and the concepts of everything that's happening. So if we're playing robber coverage and pass shows, that away side linebacker knows he's vertical and number two. We don't want our linebackers running with wide receivers. But again, the first day of practice, that's what we're going to play all day. And again, the corner's got to be able to midpoint both of them. He's playing an inverted half with it. That linebacker now is playing the run, and here he goes. Not a very good deal for us other than initially it's going to allow him to understand the strengths and the weaknesses with it. That is robber coverage. The next thing we're going to talk about is quarters coverage. Okay? In quarters for us, really the only thing that changes versus a twin set is going to be the strong safety responsibility versus the pass. My alignments are all going to stay the same. Corner's still two yards inside, seven to nine yards deep. Strong safety with an offset back to him, still going to be one by five outside. If he's got an option threat, if the back was away, he would play more head up with it. Free safety still is going to split the difference between the number two receiver and the offensive tackle, 12 yards off of that receiver. Okay, but now, if run shows to me, I'm still going to be the force and pitch player versus the option. I'm still the alley quarterback player. If pass shows, instead of just being a flat defender now, that strong safety is what we call a me technique, or a me player. He is a hang technique. He now is going to be a curl to flat player. And what me tells me is this. If number two comes up the field and then runs an outside route at five yards, the strong safety is going to handle it. We do that for this reason. We talked about in robber coverage, if number two ran an outside route, the free safety was going to give a wheel call if that route was underneath eight yards. Okay, He now gave a wheel call, and what a wheel call tells the corner is this. Number two is running outside route, and I've got inside help on number one. If that wheel ended up turning down the field, the corner would come off and play it. The free safety is robbing curl to post of number one, and the strong safety now is going to hang in the flat, again, because he is swing deep at number three with all of it. That is the biggest difference in robber coverage and quarters coverage, is that technique that the strong safety is going to play versus the pass with it. The other thing that is different for us now in robber and quarters is how we're going to line up versus a pro set. We'll draw it up here as ace with everything. But how we're going to line up in a pro set now is going to be a hip alignment for the strong safety. We're going to create a 4-3 defense, but again, we're going to do it by teaching a technique this way with it now. Instead of playing 7 by 3, I'm going to play in a, an alignment where my inside foot is on the defensive end's outside foot at 4 yards deep. That alignment we call a hip. Okay. Now, what changes for us to option responsibility-wise, I now am going to become the quarterback player, and the free safety is going to become the pitch player versus a pro set. We talked about a me call versus twins. A me call versus twins was number two came up the field and then out. The strong safety was going to handle it to allow our corner to stay on the vertical longer. Anytime we've got a pro set now and we're playing blue coverage or quarters, any outside route by that number two receiver, the strong safety is going to end up handling it. Okay, because what you don't want to happen, you don't want this guy to run a quick out and the ball's on this hash and we give a wheel call and the corner comes off quick and the free safety can't go play the vertical route of one. So now once they've gone to a pro set, a me is enacted by any outside route 
by that number two. That could be a tight end, or that could be an offset back, or a wing, or anything that the offense wanted to create with it. But again, as we talked about playing robber coverage, once they gave us a two-back set, more times than not, we're going to come down and play from the line of scrimmage with it, with the strong safety, and really tighten our free safety up with everything that happens. What ways can we go and create different looks for the offense? John Goodner, when he was at Texas Tech, uh, and he was Spike's defensive coordinator for years and years and years, we used to spend a whole lot of time with Coach Goodner, and they were very similar to what we were doing. One thing Coach Goodner always used to say was, make them beat you left-handed. Don't let an offense go and do what they do best with it all the time. Find out what they do best, and then be able to go stop what they want to do. Now, the beauty of blue coverage and why we like it is this. My alignment with the weak safety now versus a pro set. I am 3 by 10 off of that tight end. Okay? My stance, my shoulders are square with my outside foot back. My key, I am still a ball key. Run to me. Say they're running the stretch play over here. I am still the force player. And I'm the pitch player versus option. Run away from me, I'm going to be a fold cutback player. Pass shows. Now, I am man-to-man -man vertical clue of number two. So what we've done is we've taken the vertical responsibility off of that linebacker and put it on a safety. Plus, at the same time, that safety now has still got to be a guy that's going to show up at the line of scrimmage to play the run. He's got to be able to show up at the line of scrimmage to play the run, plus I now am a vertical responsibility of the number two wide receiver. If that number two wide receiver runs anything past eight yards, I'm playing it. If he runs anything outside, underneath eight yards, I'm giving a wheel call, and the biggest difference for the weak safety and the free safety, because we don't have a strong safety to this side, is this. He's going to give a wheel call, and he goes and looks up the number one wide receiver right now. The technique that the corner is going to play is this. Whenever we're playing blue, we want to talk about it being a bail. And for us, a bail is a little bit different. What I want to do is I want to show a press, but then when that football snapped, I want to be split in the wide receiver's crotch in an inside shuffle this way. And I want to be slow. And the thing we talk about now is really getting three good shuffle steps and letting that wide receiver close my cushion. Okay? Now, if pass shows, he is going to read two to one. If number two runs a quick outside route right now, the corner's going to come off quick, the weak safety's going to go look it up, and our away side linebacker now is going to go to the curl. If that route by the number two receiver happens more down the field, say it's a five or a six yard route, we want that linebacker to undercut that route now, like man under, all right? The corner is gonna stay on the vertical longer until he sees it thrown. The weak safety is gonna make a late wheel call and go look up number one with it. So how do you go and teach that? The thing that you gotta spend the most time on is that away side linebacker in the corner. We talk about if it's quick, I'm quick. So if number two runs a quick outside route right now, linebacker comes off quick, corner comes off quick, weak safety looks up one quick. Okay, if it's slow, I'm slow. If number two is a five yard out, corner's hanging more on the vertical till he sees the ball thrown, linebacker's gonna undercut it, force him to throw it over the top, the weak safety's giving a late wheel call and going. The third coverage that we're gonna talk about is halves coverage. Halves coverage for us tells us this. It's the only time, as a safety standpoint, that we're going to line up off of the football field. If the ball's in the middle of the field, both half safeties, my alignment is going to be 12 to 14 yards deep, and I'm two yards outside the hash. That's my alignment. My stance, my shoulders are square, and my outside foot's back. My key, I'm still going to be a ball key. Okay? My run responsibility, I don't have any primary run responsibility now. Okay? If pass shows now, I am playing a half technique. But again, for us, as soon as pass shows, I want to be able to take my eyes back and see what these receivers are doing too. So if we got an out and a curl combination, number two ran an outside route, so guess what? I'm still giving a wheel call, but instead of robbing curl two posts now like we did in robber or quarters coverage, he is going to rob post, 
to curl with it. Okay? The only thing that changes for us now, if that ball moves and it's on a hash, my alignment's now going to change. If I'm the safety into the boundary, I'm three yards outside the hash, still 12 to 14 yards deep. If I'm the safety to the field, I'm one yard outside of the hash with all of it. So, we've talked about robber, we've talked about quarters, and we've talked about halves. Those are the three zone coverages that we're going to teach. Okay, now, we're going to get into English. We're going to talk about the read side, we're going to talk about the away side, we're going to talk about how we want to play I-backs, and we're going to talk about how we want to play a trips formation. Now, for us, when we start talking about all of those coverages, we can play robber as a read side call. We could play robber as an away side call. We could play quarters as a read side or quarters as an away, and we could play halves either way. But now the beauty of it is we can combine what we want the free safety and the weak safety to play versus a balanced formation. Okay, we can say we want to play robber quarters. Or we can say we want to play quarter, quarter, halves. And again, there's no new teaching for the kids with it because what they do? They learned how to line up versus pro. They learned how to line up versus twins. And those next two things are going to take care of how we want to play I-backs or the run and how we want to play trips or the pass to put that. So what we've created is robber, 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 quarter, robber, halves, quarter, robber, quarter, 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 halves, halves, robber, half, quarter, halves, halves. We've created nine different coverages, but they only had to learn three. Okay, now when we start talking about I-backs, do we want to play it as a zone concept or as a man concept? If we want to play it as a zone concept, what we'll do is we will make a sky call. So again, sky is the same thing as robber coverage for that weak safety. So if pass shows, he knows he's a curl to flat player. He knows versus the run, I'm the force and the pitch player versus option. Okay? If we want to play it as a man concept over here, now we've got a different word. What we call bronco and what we call quarters is blue. But again, they both start with B's. And if I'm an away side linebacker, that becomes very important to me. Because what it tells me is this. Any word that starts with a B word in a wayside coverage is going to tell me I'm going to play that slice technique where we talked about if it's quick, I'm quick. Or if it's a five yard out, I'm now undercutting number two with it. So any of, again, that carryover that happens with it. And then how do we want to play trips? If we say nothing about playing trips, what we'll do is we'll play roll coverage. What is roll coverage? Roll coverage tells us this. It is a true quarters coverage. It would tell us that the corner is vertical of number one and number two, and he's going to squeeze to number two. The free safety is vertical of number two and number three with it. Okay? That's not very good, and we don't do very much of it because now we've got three verticals on two defenders. When we're playing roll coverage, it's going to be the same thing. What's my alignment stance key in assignment? If I'm the strong safety, my alignment still one by five outside of the number two. Stance. I'm squared up. Key, end man on the line of scrimmage to the backfield. Run shows, I'm still the force player. If pass shows now, what I have to do, I have to be physical and knock down that route by number two where we can't get three guys on the same level vertically with us. Okay? And he would still be swing deep of number three. So if number three ran through his zone and then vertical, he's going to end up playing it. For us, from a corner and free safety standpoint, is this. We talked about if all three of these guys went vertical, free safety's vertical at two and three, but he's going to squeeze more to number three. Corner's going to squeeze more to number two. The reason we want to do that is we want to take away the easiest throw with all of it. Force them to throw the ball out here. The ball's going to be in the air longer, and it's a harder thing for them to complete. Now, once the ball is snapped from a free safety standpoint when I'm playing roll coverage, I'm starting in a slow backpedal now. Okay, if run shows, then I'm going to come back forward. But if pass shows, I've got to be able to see what number three and number two are doing. Okay, as soon as one of those guys sit down, I'm going to turn it back into robber coverage 
where now I go play. So if three ran an outside route right now, I have no more two verticals. I don't need to stay in my back pedal. I can turn it back into robber or a shuffle technique where now I can go play the number two receiver with it. That's one way for us to play trips. What that allows us to do, we're not in a one-on-one -on -one back here anymore. Okay? We can play uh, squats and halves. We could come down and play that man concept we talked about to get more guys in the box with it. Okay? We could play a zone or a sky concept and do something there. But the biggest thing to know is we are not in a one-on-one -on -one back here anymore if we're going to handle the three verticals with the read side or passing strength guys with it. Okay? The next thing we're going to play is a man concept over here which we call solo. And in solo, this basically becomes our man side. The away side linebacker and the away side corner are playing man coverage on those guys. We're going to be able to stay in whatever read side call we had and play three on two here with it. But in order to do that, we've got to come up with some way of playing the vertical route of number three. How we're going to do it is we're going to build a wall with number three. The read side linebacker, he is what we call a short wall technique. And the weak safety, he is a long wall. What does short wall tell that linebacker? First of all, he's going to play his run responsibility. I'm playing the gap that I've got to play. If pass shows, I can't let anything across my face. Because again, what are we playing over here? It's a man side. Okay, there may not be anybody left with it. I'm playing short wall, I'm driving down, and I'm not letting him cross my face. The weak safety is a long wall technique. Long wall can be enacted two ways for us. If the linebacker happened to get run by, we still can't let this guy run to the man side, so we'd go down and cover him, okay? Or if number three was vertical, that can enact my long wall with all of it, all right? So for that weak safety, what's my ASCA? My alignment now is going to be based on who my vertical thread is plus what runs do I have to defend over here. Any of you guys that are on offense or anything, as soon as I'm a weak safety and I come all the way over here, Tommy Maddox came and he worked with us a couple of springs ago because he was finishing up his degree and everything. And Tommy said, the only thing I ever wanted to know throughout my pro career was, Coach, tell me where the one-on-one's at. All right, if I'm a weak safety right now and I go line up over the center, every quarterback in America knows there's the one-on-one -on -one with all of it. Okay, so what we want to be able to do with our alignment is we want to be able to act to be active and we want to disguise where we're at and what we're doing. But in order to do that, I've got to know what? I've got to know who my vertical threat is. What kind of speed threat is he getting down the field? If he's a wide receiver, he's more of a, a speed threat, so I may deepen myself up to about 10 yards with it. The other thing I've got to understand is I'm still going to be the force player on run over here with it. So if they're going to run a speed option, I'm still the pitch defender. I can't cheat myself all the way over, or now they're coming up to me and I'm blocked and they're going to go score a touchdown because we don't have a pitch player with it. Conversely, if the back is on this side now, okay, really about the only thing they can run back over here, some kind of a read zone with all of it. Okay? Again, I could show here and cheat myself over late a little bit, okay? But again, I've got to understand still. What ground do I have to defend with it? Versus the pass, I know there's my vertical. Versus the run, what gap am I going to have back to this side? And it'll all be determined by what front we're in with it. Okay, but if they hand the football off, again, we expect this guy to show up at the line of scrimmage. The hardest thing on it, and again, going back to understand, understanding the system and the scheme of what you're trying to get done, if they're going to fake here, throw three vertical, that becomes the hardest thing for that weak safety. Because if they hand that football off, we expect him to show up at the line of scrimmage and make a tackle. And if they're going to play action and throw three vertical, we expect him to go play his long wall off of number three. So what kind of drills can I set up to put that kid in a position where he goes out and he sees that? 
How do I do that? I'm going to set up the quarterback, the running back, and the number three receiver. And we're faking the ball across, may hand it off, but number three is running vertical with it. Start training their eyes and start getting them in a position where they're comfortable of what they've got to do. And that is the hardest thing when we're playing a solo call back there. How do we train them? How do we teach them to do that? And if you can, if, if you can start building confidence and the kids really believe what you're doing with it, then they're going to start playing faster. Then they're going to start having their eyes in the right spot. Then they're going to play slow with their feet where I can show up versus the run and I can go play my pass responsibility. And then third and finally, our third trips check is going to be special coverage. What special tells us is this. We're again going to handle the three verticals to the passing strength side. But how we're going to do it, we're going to play the corner to the trip side in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's got number one man. Now all we're going to do is we're going to play quarters off of two and three. So if two and three both went vertical, the strong safety would handle two. The free safety would handle number three. Here's what the strong safety knows, though. He knows the corner's in man coverage there. So what he has got to do, he's got to keep leverage on any outside route by number two or by number three with all of it, if pass shows. And again, what that's going to allow us to do on the away side is this. We can play whatever away side coverage we want to out of this category, and we know we're going to be able to stay in it if we put a special tag on the back side of it. Because we know the trips are going to be handled to the passing strength side. So what have we done? We've taught three coverages versus a balanced formation. We've given them a couple of English checks. It may be, okay, here's our verb. But now our verb's going to be enacted to what, how we want to play eyebacks or how we want to play the run with it. And then, okay, how do we want to play trips? That is our base zone package defensively and how we're going to get to it. Now, flipping gears a little bit. As you come into our safety meeting room, which is also our defensive staff meeting room, we've got a board up on the wall. And that board has got 50 squares, let's say, in it. And what we're going to do when we start breaking down an opponent Whatever personnel group they are in the most, we're going to start on this side with it. So let's say they're a huge 11 personnel team. This is going to be 11 personnel. And in 11 personnel, Pro Twins was their biggest formation. Okay, and then let's say they're going to get in tray open. And let's say they're just going to play trips with it. Okay. And then let's say they're going to get in gun strong tr tray open with all of it. That's what the formations they line up in. If they've got 26 formations they ran in 11 personnel, we're going to put them all the way here until 11 personnel ends. The next thing we're going to do, underneath each one of them, let's say they're running the stretch out of it. We're going to put it up here and we're going to create a hit chart on the stretch. But then against every opponent that they run that stretch against, we're going to use a different color for each opponent. So now as we're going throughout the course of a week, we can see, all right, this is a 4-3 team, and they wanted to run the stretch play over here for whatever reason that is. We're going to know how they're going to try, an offense is going to start to attack different defenses with it. And whenever my kids come in early in the week, this is how we're going to start our teaching progression. But for us, go back to our base three coverages. So we said two blue, sky, Solo is our call now. Again, how does that break down into an English sentence? Two tells us what we want to play to the passing strength side. So on the first thing, free safety comes out here and he sees it's a pro twins formation. He's going to say cover two, read and left, which is going to set everybody on this side of it. It's a balanced formation. So the weak safety now is going to play blue or quarters over here. It's pretty simple versus a balanced one. Now they come out, draw a line down the middle of the formation, and they've got 
three receivers over here. Anytime they have three receivers, it's going to be like a trips call for us. What word told us how we wanted to play trips? Solo did with all of it now. So what Solo is going to do for us, it's going to put us in a man concept here. It's going to allow us to stay three on two to the twins. And now we're building a wall off of number three with it. Same thing on the next formation. It's trips. We know it's going to become a solo call. Okay, for example now, let's say whenever they get in gun strong, are they doing something out of a particular formation? Do they only throw the football out of it? Do they only run the football out of it? What do we have to do? What do we have to know about that offense in order to get ourselves in the best position to take away what they do? And if there's something that shows up on that hit chart, okay, this may be a time where we're going to weak safety, bring you down into the box, and now get to a man concept with the corner and the weak safety and go ahead and slide our linebackers over and handle it with special or roll to the trips, but now it's going to give us seven guys in the box with all of it again. Okay, and let's say one thing that the offense likes to do whenever they're in 11 personnel now is put that tight end back here and create a two-back set. I don't care if he's in I-backs or if they're going to get in split backs so they can protect the football and everything. Now, if they're giving us a two-back or an I-back formation, how do we want to handle that? Because it doesn't do me any good if an offense is going to line up in a two-back formation and I'm going to stand back here at 10 yards on first down. If it's third down and 15, yeah, that's a heck of a deal. So if we wanted to control it when it was third down and 15 and we wanted to play quarter, quarter halves, all we would do is take out that word that they could check with all of it. And we would say blue five solo. So if they came out in I-backs, I'm still going to play a half technique here. We're still playing quarters here. And here we go. But if it's first down now, we're going to say, Blue 5 Sky Solo or Blue 5 Bronco Solo, which now is going to get him down to four yards with all of it. What it's allowed us to do defensively, it's allowed us to be very multiple with it. It's allowed us to go and get lined up in whatever call we think the best thing is with what that offense has done and all the other games that they've played until that point to go stop what they do. Now, how do we go about breaking down an opponent? That board is the first way that we'll start, and our GAs have it up for us at some point Sunday night. We're then going to go, and, and Coach Bumpus is going to draw up uh, their running play stuff, okay? And we're going to come up with favorite runs with all of it. And he's going to go and, and block them versus each front and how they block it versus each front. What we do against the pass is this. We've got a sheet... It's divided into eight squares, okay? And each one of those squares in it has got those five guys to start with, all right? And let's say we're, we're breaking down OU, and it's OU versus Texas, all right? Here, we're going to have the down and distance, okay? We're going to have the field position, and we'll write each of those on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and draw in the offensive formation. And we're going to draw who these guys are here, especially if they're a big group that's going to change receivers around with everything. But now we're going to draw at what level that route's happening, okay, with everything here. So say they're running out curl combinations on both sides with it. It's four yard out and it's a 10 yard curl. Whoever they throw that football to, if it's completed, we're going to color that square in. If he throws it to him and it's incomplete, we're just going to put an X there with all of it. We're going to do that with every pass route that an offense is thrown. Once we finish that, we're going to make two copies of it. Okay, once we have those two copies, we're going to divide them into piles. This is going to be the formation pile, and this is going to be the down and distance pile. We're going to go and cut every one of those into those little squares then. Okay, now we're going to take each one of those little squares, and we're going to start studying them by formation. This is who they're trying to get the football to, in a pro twins formation. Okay, these are the pass routes that we've got to stop. One thing that's really helped us as far as playing the pass with all of it, we've started naming routes. So let's say we're playing Tennessee one week and they've got one route combination that they run a whole lot. It's kind of their signature route. And what you'll find is offenses that are good, they've got just a few things that they do. 
they're going to be on that system and they're going to do what they do and they're going to say, okay, we can do it better than you guys can get, can get good at doing it. For example, when we played Texas Tech when Mike Leach was there in 2004, we were ahead 28 to 7. We ended up getting beat 70 to 35 in that football game. Okay, they came to Fort Worth the next year and we beat them 12 to 3 and we were the only team since Leach had been there that held those guys without a touchdown. Now, we screwed it up the year before, but we tried to fix it the second year. How we tried to go back and fix it is this. Something that was that different, and it can be option football, but if you know what people are going to do, and they're going to do the same thing over and over and over, let's start practicing during spring ball, and let's start getting our kids to where they understand those concepts. Where if you're playing Navy and they're a double slot option team, don't let Monday or Tuesday's practice be the first time those kids have seen it. Because then they're going to be out there and coach, this is a completely different deal for us. How are we doing all of it? Start during spring ball. Start teaching them those concepts where now you have carryover. The other thing that we'll do is on Sunday nights during the season, because we practice on Sunday nights, we go about an hour practice. A lot of it special teams, basic fundamental stuff. We're going to start introducing the next offense. And then we may have 10 minutes of half-line option drill. We may have 10 minutes of throwing the football type stuff versus something that stays very consistent. I started saying about naming routes. If you're playing Tennessee and you've got a signature route, call it the vol route, okay? And now instead of going out to the kids, well, it's an out vertical and a curl, hey, it's the vol route. And that word can carry over. You may be playing Memphis one week, but it's still going to be the vol route with it where they start recognizing those things, and it, it starts staying with them. I think that's something that has really allowed us to communicate better with our kids, and our kids get on the same page with it. But now we've got those two different piles of things, and we've got them by formation, and now we've got them by down and distance. And down and distance, it becomes really important, and the first thing we look at are the third down stuff. Okay, here it is on third down. What do they like to run? Are they trying to run routes to the sticks? Where does that change their philosophy? If it's third and three, are they trying to run short things? Will they take a shot with all of it? But when they're in this formation and it's third down, here's exactly what we're getting. Now, as we go through and we set up practices, and as we set up our half zone stuff, that's the thing that we're getting the most reps at. That's the thing that we're now going to work our stopper calls and everything against, because that's what we know odds say that we're getting with all of it. Okay. But that's how we break down the passing game. I think one thing you have to do a great job of, with young players especially, is teach them how to study the game and teach them to be students of the game. So many young kids come in and they couldn't tell you how many eligible receivers there are. They couldn't tell you what makes a guy eligible. Start teaching them to be as much like coaches as you can. Teach them how to watch film instead of just putting it up there and all I'm watching is the football with all of it. Teach them what the receiver's going to look like when he's running a particular kind of route. What the offensive line's going to look like when it's a run or a pass block with all of it. What the quarterback's going to look like in a three-step or a five-step drop. Start teaching them to become students of the game. Now, as you do that and you're starting to try to teach them the first way we start teaching is we're going to teach them on the board with it. We're going to chalk talk it. Okay? From a safety standpoint, I'm going to teach a whole lot of that hit chart that's on the board. Here's what they like to do by formations. Here's what we've got to go stop. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to teach them video wise. What's happening here is this I'm going to create a favorite pass DVD or a play-by-formation DVD where they get to see the two or three biggest plays that they're going to run out of a particular formation. It's basically the same thing we just saw on the hit chart board, but now they're seeing it in actual video stuff. And I'll make them a copy of that where they can take it home, and if they watch it 20 or 30 more minutes throughout the week, the more film we can study, the better we're going to be with all of it. So we've chalked it, we've videoed it. The next thing we're going to do is a walkthrough. We've got a 15 to 20 minute walkthrough before every practice. Okay, now early in spring ball and early in fall camp, that walkthrough is kind of going to be an on the field installation for us. We're going to sit there and we're going to go through each position exactly what it is.
Okay, they're going to get an idea of that. Now, once we get into the season, how that changes is this. That walkthrough is going to be based on what the opponent's doing. Again, Sunday night we're going to start it. Before we go our Sunday practice, we're going to have 15 or 20 minutes of walkthrough. Okay, we're playing San Diego State this week. They're primarily a 21 personnel team. This is what they like to do out of it. And we're going to start hammering, them, hammering it into them that way. And then we're going to go to practice. Within practice, the first thing we have, we have individual stuff, and then we've got small groups. And then we're going to get into team settings with all of it. And that's how we go and that's how we teach everything. Again, it's all going to start chalking it, showing video. And the other thing I like to do in chalk talks, kind of the same deals, are player handouts with all of it. Like I said, we practice on Sundays. Our kids have Mondays off because it's a lab day for them and all that kind of deal. At some point on Monday afternoon, I expect them all to come by and I'm going to have a sheet of 15 to 20 pages of different things that we need to look for. Sometimes it may not be that long, sometimes it's a little bit longer. But now they can take that home and they can start studying. Oh, if they're in this formation, there's a great chance we're going to do this. Okay? Where again, and not, some of them will take it and some of them will put it in their locker and they won't ever look at it. All right, but the ones that really want to be students and really figure out what it is, like number 17, the Tyler Luttrell kid that I was talking about that had never played a down of safety seven games before our first ball game, he would take those things and he would study it. He's a good student. He's smart. Football and winning are important to him. Okay, and, and those things. 